Hey everybody out there in the nation, we got a new video for you today. So it seems that I've been having some problems with the thermostat. You end up with the AC off reading on the uh, dashboard along with the check engine light. And then your other symptom is that you don't have any uh, cold AC. The buttons all work, but uh, no cold air. So, and this has been a kind of an intermittent, it comes and goes, it comes and goes. So today, what we're going to go ahead and do is change out the thermostat based on the re research that I've been doing. So this thermostat we're going to change is on the 3.7 liter i5 engine. It actually goes into the side down here below the I alternator and down inside the engine. And then down there is the lower, well this whole piece is the lower radiator hose. And we're also going to... Uh, change out that hose while we're at it just uh, for peace of mind So the first thing we want to do is go ahead and get this wheel off Back wheels chalked So nothing's rolling and we're gonna get it jacked up and then we're gonna get back up inside here We're gonna remove the inner fender well and then Get started on removing the coolant so on these particular wheels, I used a six millimeter, it's a six millimeter Allen head to remove four of the bolts here to get the cover off. And then for my lugs, we're using a, a 19, 19 millimeter to remove all the lugs. I broke, broke them all loose with a break over bar but I'll go ahead and, and then use the 19 millimeter and impact to get the rest off. Obviously one of the number one rules about working underneath any vehicle is that you're jacking it up and then you always have a jack stand. And then extra safety measures is that you just leave the jack with a little tension on it too so you have double holding power if you will. So. What we're going to do is remove all these little clips They're all over the place. Actually, that one obviously is missing, but they're here. We'll get up underneath this first lip here with the flat head. I actually have more of a um, fastener pulling tool. And then we'll get up underneath the second part and then just work it out. That way we're not going to be breaking off any of the, any of the rivets as much as we can. So we have the upper fender wear liner out. See it laying over here. There were technically a one ten millimeter, 10 millimeter bolt. This is the pry tool that I used to use on all these little clips, but there's nine of these. And then there's one really high one, and I had to use this to kind of get behind it and pull it down. Um, Otherwise, it actually came out really easy on the back side, just dropped down, and then the, the front just kind of came out behind it. Now, with that being said, let's take a look up under here. You can see the hose, you see the hose clamp. Uh, come on, get it in focus here. And you can see one. 10 millimeter bolt, so it's the thermostat housing. We'll get that off. I end up needing to remove the front skid plate. Um, there's just four bolts, they're 12 millimeter, two at the top, two down here. You may be able to loosen those and then drop it back so it can drop through the big holes, but I just took all four of them out. And then uh, that gives me access to that lower radiator hose. All right, so I'm down here underneath lower radiator hose. We're just gonna squeeze this clamp, slide it back, work it loose off the lower radiator there, and then slowly let it drain. Well, uncontrollably let it drain. I have basically like a, a concrete mixing pan um, that works great for this. Um, we'll just use that to trap all of our coolant. That wasn't too much of a, a mess. Got most of it all contained and it's still draining out. So 
We're gonna let that go for a while until it stops. Well, that's still draining. We're gonna go ahead and move on up here to the thermostat housing. So, um, I just used a quarter inch ratchet, long extension, a secondary long extension, and uh, basically getting way back in there. It won't focus in because I can't get past this top of the strut housing here. So, we'll get that out and then work on getting to the next bolt. There's two bolts for that, and they're both 10 millimeter. From this side, the left side, if you will, you can see the bolt that's kind of highlighted there next to the big one on the right there. That's your top one. I was able to come up there and hit that one with the swivel and then um, still two long extensions, all both quarter inch. I was able to get the housing off and you can see there's a, a black o-ring still attached so we want to make sure we get all that off get that housing cleaned up or around the housing area that it's going to seat against the engine now i had to feed this kind of back and forth back and forth down around and then dropped it through the bottom and it came out as the thermostat attached and then the end that I loosened up and drained so we'll go ahead and get the thermostat mounted up and get our new hose on. Just a quick comparison between the hoses. This particular one here is a Gates 22917. That's the hose for that, the lower radiator hose. And then this is also a time to think about if we're going to use the original OEM clips or OE clips. This is the new housing, comes with a gasket. This is loose, so we will put something to kind of tack it down before we put it on. Here's the old thermostat housing. You can tell there's been some some seepage. There was definitely some seepage down around the bottom of the other one. And you can decide if you want to end up changing them out to a gear clamp. It's up to you, but this uh, part number for this gate thermostat, thermostat housing is uh, 34045, and it just comes as one full assembly. The housing and the thermostat's all, in, all basically pressed together, made together. Now I just use a little silicone to tack the gasket in, make sure it's set flush just so it doesn't come off and then get pinched when I'm torquing it down. All right, our housing's back in. 10 millimeter, 10 millimeter bolt there. And let's see if we can get it to pick up the other one up. So. Yep, at the top up there. Torque both those down. Now I'm gonna go ahead and put the hose on. Now what I went ahead and did was um, just take some of your coolant, your old coolant, um, and rub it around inside your hose and on the lip of the hose, it'll slide up over that housing pretty easy. Just make sure that if you're going to change out your clamp that you have your clamp on before you um, you get that far. And I'll go ahead and, and uh, get my bottom hose on and I'll come back and I'll tighten up both my clamps. But you lube, uh, lube your other end the same way. Just that coolant um, has a uh, slipperiness to it that makes it easier to slide in. Hose clamp on on the upper. And hose clamp on on the lower. So now we're going to go ahead and fill it up and then check for any leaks and then we'll let it run for a little what, bit for the thermostat to open up and then we'll get ready to top it off. So for coolant we're using the Xerox Valvoline Dex Cool 5050 mixture so don't add any water to it. Um, you can see it clearly it's for GM. This is the color of this one is actually orange. You might be able to see it down there but hence the orange cap. So We'll get it filled up. Now I'm gonna go ahead and let let it idle. 
Get nice and warm. Have the heater on. Full, full blast. Cool it in the reservoir. Cap tight. So we're just gonna let this idle for a bit. And we'll uh, come back to it after it cools down. Check up, check the coolant and top it off. So just for the purpose of the code, P0128. Just gonna let that run. Coolant thermostat. So we'll clear that code out and we're all done. Alright, cleared the code out. No codes. AC off is gone. Temperature gauge is up. So those are all good signs that we've cleared up the problem. Only time will tell. We'll get this thing back together now. Alright, so we have our wheel well liner in there up in place. Now we're going to do show you how to put in these clips. So basically you're just going to line up the hole. They snap up inside and then you have a push button that's going to tighten it up and secure it. So you'll do that with all those and then your uh, 10 millimeter bolt that goes up underneath there and you'll have that and all secure. Everything's all put back together. No leaks. Just have a towel down there wiping up stuff from earlier. One of, one of the things I like to do then is put a little bit of anti-seize on the back of the, the wheel hub. This is the first time I've done this since I've owned this vehicle. So um, now we're going to go ahead and get the tire back on. All right, wheel on, cap on. It's all finished up. Feel free to like, subscribe, and share. I'll have more videos to come in the near future. I'll see you guys later. Thanks.